<coughs> we want to know everything. Right. This was. Um, we, we manufacture um, little sensors and we, we test them all every day. Um, we had some old test systems, um, but they were they weren't working brilliantly. Um, the old systems. They were using Navi and other cards. Um, they were using old E-series cards and these the old AMI 640 multiplexers. Um, they don't work too well with Windows 7 all the time. And um, we need to update these systems. Um, to test this one product, we were using two, two test fixtures. Uh, one's a big 40-way, one's a big 40-way test fixture. Um, the bottom one, I think that's a nine-way, it was a 15-way test fixture at one point, and we had two of those. So the sensors were going through the first test fixture and then the second one. Um, every device was serial numbered and identified with spiller barcode. So um, we had hand scanners for the operators to scan the sensor into the position. So every time they were testing, a sensor went through complete tests, they were testing, they were scanning the sensor twice for two test fixtures. So it wasn't very efficient, but um, it worked well for 15 years or whatever you used it for. Um, we were looking to, we had a slightly revised product, we want to have a new test fixture for that. So we were looking at how we wanted to test them. We wanted to go down to six test positions and then make it, each test position work independently from the others. So they could put a sensor in, it would run the test, and when that finished, they could put another one in straight away without having to like, wait for 40 to finish. Um, all our sensors um, are exposed to different gases because they're gas sensors, so we have to have some solenoid valves to control the gas, so we ended up having to have the gassing um, valve arrangement for each test position. So there's a lot of um, just sort of output here. Um, we're talking to, um, I forget the guy's name, but I don't, but, um, and I, but, um, I'll see his name in a minute. And um, we were talking, we got to, um, using a compact dash chassis um, to control all this issue and output. So what we came up with was um, four slot chassis, um, an analog module for measuring the output of the sensors and pressures. Uh, there's a digital input for feedback on various parts of the system. And then we have lots of digital outputs to control the sort of valves and various other things we have there. Um, the one thing we liked about these um, CDAP modules, the, the digital output ones, is you could actually run valves, 12 and 24 volt valves straight through them. You could use them to switch them straight through. Um, just connect up 24 volts to one side and wire it through, and these modules could handle it. Whereas before we used the E-series cards, we were using 5 volt logic and we had to have our own boards to um, control all that, that side of things. So that made it a bit easier. So going from the big 40 way position, we went to 6 ways. This, this is, these are two of the positions that we had here. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the left side, uh, position 1, there's a little blue thing at the bottom, that's the device we're testing. That just drops into the bottom of the fixture there. And what happens is the operator put the hand in, put the sensor in, there's a light guard there, and that'd be broken. And some of the digital inputs, one of the digital inputs was reading that. So the program knows when you've broken it, once you're taking your hand out, there's actually a barcode scanner uh, positioned at the back, pointed to the back of the device, and it would automatically read the barcode. So you put your hand in, put the sensor in, take your hand out, it automatically reads the barcode and sit the sensor. It knows what device it is, 
what test it's going to run, and it starts running the test. And the first part of these measures are hand in the way, and then it lowers a hood down. and uh, starts um, the gassing procedure and taking measurements. Um, all those, there's two positions there, there's six positions, they all run independently using the same code. Um, on the right hand side there I've got, um, I have a configuration file for each test position and the way I've set up the, um, the CDAC module, so if I've, got, I've got a DACMX task for each module and then in the code, instead of trying to access each individual bit by the individual parts of the program, I'm passing all the um, requirements, what, what output we want set on to a, to a main loop. And then that's handling, set, setting the different bits for the digital outputs. And this just um, is telling the program which bit needs to be set for that individual part of the code. So we've got several different things on there. So we've got oxygen, nitrogen, gases. We've got a hood, hood down. Um, there's two hood uh, controls. We've got a, um, a water column because we do a pressure test at the back. Um, and there's, there's various indicators on the front. So those all combined into one um, task that, that is handled by a central loop. Uh, we wanted to keep the user interface quite simple, whereas before we had the operators scanning in sensors, scanning in positions, scanning in gases, and pressing buttons on the control panel. This is just this user interface is just purely an indicator to show what each position is doing. Um, the user doesn't actually, the operator doesn't need to interface um, interact with this at all. Um, they get all the information they need from the front of the test fixture. So that that was there was not really any user interaction with that front panel at all. Um, when we were talking with um, Tony Gibbs, is his name? Um, <laughs> easy to forget his name, sorry. We were looking at the, the structure to um, control all this. Um, we came up with this, this sort of uh, architecture, where you've got up the top of the different processes, that's the, the code that controls the test. Um, We've got six instances of the same bit of code running the test. That would then pass um, the requests down. The, the red lines are showing where it's sending the um, back digital output requests down to a queue at the bottom, which is going into the hardware um, loop. Um, the hardware loop is continually running. Uh, it's taking measurements from the devices all the time, and it's also making any changes to the digital output line. So that's the way we got round having six independent tests, all controlling one big DAC uh, unit. Um, let's have a quick look. If I can. And if I can get so the the code in the end ended up with um, main up the top there's a, a user event structure which just handled just kept the, the program ticking over um, it did handle some of the um, scanner interface um, then underneath that we had a, a loop that was checking for the e stop button. Um, if that's pressed, we just want to reset the device and um, reinitialize everything. So that was um, continuously running and just looking at the digital states for that. Um, a bit lower down on this right hand side here, we've got these VIs, they're all the same VI. They're numbered one to six, those are six um, different, six individual uh, test positions running. They're continuously running um, and they know which position they are because we're feeding in a number. Um, just above that we've got a VI up here which is, um, that's the DAC loop, that's just continuously running to do all the digital input and output. See that in a minute. Um, down the bottom a bit further on there's some more handling for some of the seal, the scanners which um, 
it's taking in the uh, numbers that are read, which position they are, and then passing it on to the individual, passing the message back up to the individual positions here. Inside um, the test position, um, VI, um, we had six of these running at the same time. We had to make sure that we had six instances of it running, not the same one running at the um, six, one after the other. So we're setting it non reentry and execution, so we we're just making sure that we had separate instances of it running. Um, these actually run as a loop until the program ends and they, they sort of hold <coughs> their um, test status internally so if we had them the same one was trying to be run over and over again for different positions it would just all get confused so we're running that one through um, this is just showing the initialization part of that one um, and what I was doing we send a, a message through it's, it's a bit small there but this is sending a message through to the um, digital hardware since it's on our queue and we're just saying to clear all the digital outputs um, I think I might have a better picture in a minute um, the digital loop yeah better <laughs> so, the digital loop that's run, run on the block diagram is just two loops. One's running the digital input and the other's running the digital output. Um, digital input is taking the two tasks we set up, one for the analog and one for the digital, and making the data available on a notifier so that the individual positions can then read what those what, what they want to read from that. Um, the, the bottom loop is taking uh, taking the, the state of the digital outputs that we want to set and just making sure that we're keeping up to date with that so any updates to the digital outputs from any positions is sent through the bottom part shared between all the different digital lines um, I didn't get too involved with wiring it up the way it was set up, it wasn't test position one is using the first eight bits, test position two is using the eight. It was the first eight bits handle, or the first six lines handle the the same function on across all the different positions. So it, it wasn't um, divided up into position; it's divided up into function. So that that's why we had to do a bit of clever stuff to um, share that out. Oh, yeah, no problem if you. Have things all mapped out exactly, and one of your channel burns out because you shorted something or damaged it, then you're screwed because you can't. Yeah. You need to be able to say, replace that one with this other yeah. one. Yeah, that's another thing. When I was um, putting the um, set configuring this, that, that configuration file that we've got, we, if we had to do something like that, we could change that in that text configuration file to change it to a different channel. So that would be quite easy to do. Somebody was telling me that's how PLCs work, but I don't know anything about that. So. Can't see my screen. Um, what screen are we? I've lost my screen. John Yeah, I'm just wondering which one I'm on. There we go. Right. So, what's it shown here? This is the um, the digital um, outputs. Um, what we're doing is on the left hand side that VI is taking a, um, a text file, a configuration file, any file, um, and it's reading in all the test position data. So we know that the and the oxygen valve will be on a certain on a certain uh, channel and it's, it's setting up a lot, um, a lot of masks with, uh, attached to um, task names um, so um, that 
this is the initialization for the part of the digital output, and it, it ends up creating a, um, a big array with um, three, well, a, a cluster with three arrays in it, one being the mask, the, the bitmap mask, um, to set that um, output. The next one be the name, the friendly name that we're using, like oxygen or nitrogen. And then the third part is the, the task, that the, the, the DACMX task name that we're using. Um, just an example here at the top. We, we, give, we give them friendly names like O2DO or fail for, to turn the red light on or pass to turn the green light on. And then we've got the, um, after that, up top, we've got the um, digital tasks that we'd used. So we end up two digital output modules. So we were sending two, so we set up two tasks. And then on the right hand side, we've put together a, a way of uh, saying which, which bit in that digital output we need to set for that one. So it, it looks quite familiar. You, you've got eight bits divided up into four blocks. So you've got 32. Can these not work with individual tasks for each bit? Um, I was a bit worried about doing that because we wanted to be able to maybe set um, it's, it works on six positions but if you want to expand it set up individual tasks um, would have got got a bit cumbersome to initially set up I think well similar um, to this right just said bit one is O2 DO yeah. that's one you just got a bunch of global channels yeah that are yeah really, you don't necessarily have to do Bite by bite, you do bit by bit. Yeah. But um, that, that's the way we set it up, and it, it works works quite well. So this is just showing that we pass um, a name. This is the digital output um, VI. We're setting um, a certain channel. We're looking it up in the list, and then we're setting that bit to be high. So next time it goes through the loop of the digital outputs, it sets that one high or low. Um, the scanners um, we were using, they were quite fun to use. They're serial devices. And when um, we wanted it triggered, we just send out a, 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 a read request um, on the serial lines. And they, they sort of light up all red and try and read whatever's in front of it. Um, as soon as they've read something, they'll return that back down the serial line, so we're continually reading the serial lines. Um, once we read, once something was read, um, that, top, um, that top for loop is on the main block diagram, um, and it's running um, in the timeout loop, I think it is. And that's just reading each um, serial port, making see if there's any data ready to be read. If there is, it's sending the message down to the lower loop, where we're sending out uh, the the check serial command to the individual positions. Um, so the user interface, it's it's a very basic one. It's just there for indication. So we've got um, a, like we've got a queue that each position has its own queue to send out updates to the main VI because we didn't have control over them directly so we sent it sent it out for a view, for a queue and that's running in the top level again. Um, we have various um, queues and um, I used a couple of notifiers for some reason um, to send the messages um, back and forth between the different levels. Um, the main VI has the four or five um, references on the left um, we've got the AI notifier and the digital input notifier. Those are then available to the positions to see what state their individual um, device is or the text, test fixture is. Um, we've got a digital output message queue, which is how each position sends it on this global message queue, the state that they want their test fixture to be in down to the digital loop, digital output loop. Um, the scanner queue just handles how the scanner works, and we've got another digital message, digital input message queue, which is checking 
things like the e-stop, which we just need to make sure we, we check quite often in case they want to stop it. Um, going down on the right-hand side, each individual position would have its own two queues. Um, the individual positions are run as a queue meshes, queue state machine, and that th th they maintain their own state by adding to the queue or whatever they need to do. But what um, the, the main loop would send um, an update down through that queue if the serial number had appeared, the scanner had scanned the serial number. So that's how we start the test that way. Um, as the test runs, it's, what we've done a lot of times is uh, we've had a set a sequence of events for the test. Um, this, using the queued state machine, we, we got away from the set test where we can uh, vary the test depending on how the sensor performs. So we don't do a full test as we used to do. We do a shortened version, which is slightly dynamic the way it works. Um, so we use the queue state machine just to change the way that works. And we can, if the sensor fails at an early part of the test, we just stop it early. Um, then the position status is just used to update um, the, the front panel for its individual position. Uh, let's see what else we've got. And then what we're looking at at the end, um, just look at the, the two um, the two fixtures side by side, see so what the old way of doing it, we've got two tests, two separate, se separate test fixtures. They run for, first, the old way runs seven minutes and four minutes, plus the time for loading. So um, that, that, there's quite a lot of time involved with running that fixture. You've got 40 sensors to scan in as well, so it's not a quick thing to, to run. Um, on the new <coughs> fixture, the operator just puts the sensor in, the, the fixture just gets on and does it. Um, has a maximum test time of four minutes, but that could be a lot quicker if it <coughs> fails early or if the sensor passes early. So worst case, it's a four minute test. Um, the old fixture, we were doing manual scanning, so they had hand scanners to scan each um, sensor in position. The new fixture, it's all including the, the, the ATE, they don't do any manual scanning, the, the fixture does it all. Um, there's a lot of manual handling, on, multiple handling sensors on the old way, because there's two separate tests. You have to scan the sensors twice. The new way, just single touch the sensor. Um, it's, we're, we're going very sort of lean and um, single piece flow with the way that our production lines are working. So this is fitting quite well with the way that we work. There's a space saving as well. Um, over, well, about six meters of workspace. Um, we could have been taken with the old fixtures. Um, though those, you can only see half of one of the fixtures on the left, but it would have taken up about six meters of workspace. The new one is within about a meter. Um, it, that's important, that's important, yeah. So we've gone from yeah, six meters down to a one meter width. Um, the old system used, used old E-series DAC cards, old horrible legacy DAC, AMUX 64T cards, which don't work with Windows 7 very well. The new one is working on CDAC chassis, and it works brilliantly, and we can put it on the network and run the PC separately if you want. It doesn't have to be run directly at the, at the, um, on the production cell. So that's, um, that's basically what we did and how we used the CDAC. Okay. So do the testers like it better? Yes. Yes. With the old system, they have hand scanners that they had to keep pulling the trigger to scan the sensors, put the sensor on the board, keep doing that 40 times each test and now they just put the sensor in once. Um, I've got a video I can show one of these um, test sequences running. This is the new one. This is the new one. 
if I can get my computer. Okay, well this, this is the new test fixture. Um, we've got six positions here. And it started off by operating, putting the sensor into position. So if we just want to run this quickly, you should see the sensors go in. There's a red flash where the scanner's, and she drops it. But red flash where the scanner's reading the serial number. And then hood comes down. <laughs> She was getting ready to get home at the time. So, <laughs> so they all run independently. Uh, How did you arrive at six? Is that a timing thing? Or is that yeah, a that's a timing thing. The, the production line, were, they've, they've worked out attack times of the sensor going around the production line and to get the number of sensors out and the way that we wanted to run the test, they worked out six was about right. Yeah. They don't always use them all. Sometimes it works out that they can use the first five, but um, the capacity is there. But once it starts failing, you can do it asynchronously, can't Yeah, that's that just the first time. That must save a lot time. of time, does it? Yeah, I mean, these all start off one after the other. I mean, if you if we keep watching for a few minutes, you see that some of them um, will finish out of sequence. Um, what they're doing is the, the it's running um, different gases through and taking measurements. If it's reach, reaching a certain reading at a certain point, it will then skip on to the next part of the test because because it's it's past that part. So the, these can these can finish the test segments earlier than before. So the gases are using calibrated gases. So yeah, that's all. Thirty percent or whatever it is. Whatever we're using. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Thirty percent. You aren't using full gas because it just keep your sensor. No, what we're using on these sensors, these are oxygen sensors, and we typically use a nitrogen um, cylinder and a 21% oxygen cylinder. Um, we make other products, we'll use different gas concentrations for different products, but yeah, the, the, these sensors um, are, are more like um, ambient oxygen, so we're measuring up 21% typically all the time. They don't tend to go much higher. So that's only got the E stop and the Door, then. Have you got a door release, or can you stop it? If you want to stop one test quickly, you have to do the e-stop. No. Yeah, you have to stop the e-stop. So there's there's some um, inside in front of each of those positions. There's a light curtain. So as soon as you put a hand in there, that that position will stop what it's doing. Oh, so it's all um, there mm -hmm. you go. So that second position now passed. The green lights come on now to say it's passed. So the hood raises up. The operator then takes the sensor out, and then they would usually put another sensor in there and then restart it. So then that would be, they would be out of sequence. She's not going to do it because she's getting lazy and it's time to get home, but <laughs> I just want to show. So what's that doing there? So those, 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 tests, like those tests are finished. Um, these sensors got a little bar on the bottom. So that little white box there is just taking the bar off the bottom of the sensor, which is part of the measurement system. So you've got three positions there have passed, taken sets out. I think one more will pass. Um, but two of those positions are going to go on for the full four minutes, I think, of the test. And they will actually stay red. That red light at the back flashing, that's yeah. the scanner trying to scan, see, because you've broken the light guard, ah, it, okay. it's, it's just checking to see if there's something in there. Right. There's nothing there, so it times out after a certain time it goes into a wait state. Yeah. So, <laughs> so all the operators just need to look at the, the um, indicators at the bottom there to see what the state of that position is. If it's yellow, it's under test. If it's green, it's passed, they can take it out and put it in the pass um, tray. Those indicators on the bottom are they the same as what's on the screen? They're the so same as the screen. Watch yes. the screen yes. at all, yet yeah. The, the screen shows you, there you go, these two positions have got oh, red now. Right. They have to press the red button to release it to, so that they can't just put that into the passed pile. And um, they go into the red box to show. But they can put their hand in while it's moving. What's moving? Well, they. 
while the thing's moving up, they put the hand in. Yeah. There's, okay, there's, no pinch, there's no trapping. There's no trapping um, at the top. Yeah. Um, it, the problem is if the hood's coming down, there, um, good there would be yeah. a trapping thing. So while it's coming down, the software's looking um, and will disengage the, yeah. the hood. There's also a hardware interlock as well. So if the light guard is um, broken while the, it's under low hoods under low pressure, it will also do a hardware uh, release. But um, we do it on both, so we know what's going on. Okay, good. That's what I've been trying to present for the last year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't do any actual Rio programming? At no, this is all in the... LabVIEW based on a desktop. Yeah. Um, talking with um, Tony and I, it probably could do something with uh, Rio, but the way that our company wants to run this, they don't want to go onto that. But they're, they're quite happy to use desktop lab view, which is fair enough, it works. Yeah, yeah. But the CDAP modules have made it a lot simpler to, to run that test like that. Yes, we're, we're starting to use a lot more of those rather than the old um, PCI and such cards. Yeah, yeah. It's just the use of connectivity is, yeah. It's effectively like, I'm fine at the moment, I've got 10 USB, but you use USB cards. Yeah. You've got 10 USB cards, and you can actually have just one if you have a C series chassis. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite like, a hard thing to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to say, you know, I have a deck card or have yeah. a, a compact deck, yeah. it's, it's 500 quid more. And but it's, it's actually not that much more. But, well, what's, but it's, it's, it's easy to connect. Yeah, but it must be much more. It's not that much more when you add everything up. And the thing I'm having now is all my USB hubs are falling over. Yeah, I'm, I'm powering my USB hubs off a thousand pound power supply because it gives me enough current. So, <laughs> 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 you're like, you want to do it. So, <laughs> that's, the well, that's been running in production now, our production for two years, and it's not fallen over apart from the PC itself yeah. falling over. but. No, nothing's happened to the system. It's, it's been up for, they, they're running, they have been running 24 hour shifts on this, and it's just been running continuously. And it's all yeah, working. Working machines, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so whereas we had been possibly testing 400 a day, um, we now easily testing 1800 a day. Jeez. Devices That's through that fixture, and it just, it's so all It's a new one. <laughs> hey, cool. oh, oh, I, all your text -text <laughs> I think it was specified what they what we wanted and that, that they did. didn't we didn't get anybody else involved with designing it. We we designed it in house and this is what we want this how yeah, we want it to nice. run. So we we got a machine shop to just put it together. Yeah, it works well. And we're getting a second fixture in because it works so well, a second fixture in duplicate of that to go off. At another manufacturing facility in China, so that's you know, my code running in China, which is scary. <laughs> yeah. But you've got the user interface for that to do the translation. Yeah, yeah. No, there's very little space, so we just leave that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That big text. Cool. Thanks for that, mate.